With us to elaborate more on Kuwait's participation in the summit and active advocacy for climate issues is Dr. Yahya Najee al Hadban, a research scientist at the Energy and Building Research Center of the Kuwait Institute for Scientific Research. Good afternoon, Dr. Yahya. Uh, good afternoon to you and to your audience and uh, uh, your uh, uh, the, whoever is listening to us or watching us. <laughs> Could you uh, help us answer this first question? What is the importance of the State of Kuwait's participation in this year's summit, unlike previous participations? Right. Now, uh, the conference aims uh, to discuss ways to fight climate change, which increased and has a negative impact on the planet and its habitants. So uh, the state of Kuwait as an important and a major partner with the United Nations and other countries of the world have started giving efforts in combating and trying to fight uh, climate change and global warming. Although there are no commitments in Kuwait, but it uh, has, uh, uh, Kuwait started uh, expressing its ambition mm -hmm. to invest into uh, different resources like uh, renewable energies and clean resources to uh, uh, reduce the uh, emissions of greenhouse gases. So <clears throat> as, as the state of has been uh, reiterating commitment to the international agreement uh, to cut gas emissions to building a system capable of uh, addressing the future challenges. So in addition, Kuwait is also moving forward to achieving a uh, new Kuwait vision by increasing the 15% from local electricity and renewable energy by 2030. Dr. Yahya, what is your expectation of the COP28 summit? Or what can we expect from it? Yeah, well, um, you know, it's very important to, uh, before we express our expectation, to know what the conference itself is focusing on. Like, for example, there are six important elements that the conference would like to achieve. One of the most important things is the international cooperation. We all know that uh, the climate change and global warming phenomena, it's a challenge for all the countries, although the, 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 the uh, phenomena started because of the industrial countries starting burning fossil fuels and mm -hmm. coal uh, during so many years, which increased the concentration of greenhouse gases in the climate. But the effect of this thing came on everybody, not on, only on the uh, industrial countries. So uh, the international cooperation, cooperation between the countries is quite important to anticipate anticip anticip the international cooperation and reduce the uh, climate change uh, uh, side effects and its uh, uh, effects by mitigating the energy, the, the greenhouse gases. In addition, uh, we have to achieve some sort of climate neutrality by relying on clean resources, alternative energy, uh, renewable energy, and even try the fuel, the fossil fuel, even try to come to optimize the quality of it to a cleaner fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is transforming uh, challenges into opportunities. We know to take actions and fight this phenomena, it's not an easy task really. So the issue is how do we take those challenges and obstacles and convert them into obstacles? And this can be achieved by the international cooperation. And the last uh, target is really to have the youth uh, participation you know it's like the youth is the heart and the soul of all the society worldwide so having the youth participation particular they have particular importance uh, uh, to empowering uh, young people and involving them in, uh, in shaping the future uh, which emphasize on their role in the uh, in their conference that's why we have the youth are participating with us dr Yahya. Uh, for the last question, could you tell us what effective measures can be taken by the state of Kuwait to reduce the carbon emission? Yes, uh, like I said, I mean, uh, Kuwait for a as a country, uh, we, we don't have any really commitments from the United Nations towards uh, the climate change. But uh, as an ambition and voluntary action, Kuwait started taking actions and investing in clean resources and renewable energy for so many years to satisfy and achieve the sustainable development goals. And recently, I would like to stress on uh, uh, the announcement of His Highness, the Crown Prince, Sheikh uh, Mishael uh, Jabir al-Ahmed al Jabir al-Subah. Uh, may he made it clear and get instructions to start investing into renewable energies and build more uh, renewable energy power plants and find resources that are clean in order to 
cut down in the uh, local level of greenhouse gases emissions and help the United Nations in achieving this target. In addition to that, Kuwait invested for so many years in different projects on renewable energy, like the Shigaya Renewable Energy, uh, mm -hmm. renewable energy Power Park that started injecting uh, clean energy into the grid since 2019. Uh, the the uh, partners in the oil sector started uh, providing the mist of electricity and water with a clean fuel that is used in the power plants and with uh, very good efficiency or high efficiency and less emissions. Uh, in addition to that, Kuwait Institute, uh, Institute of Scientific Research is also partnering with all the institutions in the country to do research to achieve the sustainable development goals uh, by doing research in renewable energy, alternative energy efficiency, even uh, uh, starting to investigate in the investment of renewable uh, uh, nuclear energy. Well, Dr. Yahya, unfortunately, that's all the time we have now, but I'd like to thank you for your insight and your time. Dr. Yahya Najil Hedman from the Kuwait Institute of Scientific Research.